Well, hey, how you doing? Um, I hate to say this, but I'm not trying to look cool right now. Got my hat on, sweatshirt and everything. I do it because my basement is cold and we're in the middle of a snowstorm. And it kind of, I don't want to kind of stop practicing and doing my own thing. So I do whatever it takes. This segment, if you will, is on a personal note why people have been giving electronics such a bad rap in the live environment. We've all known that they've been in the recording environment for years, but you know, you don't see a whole heck of a lot of electronic drums in the live environment. You see triggers on normal drums, but actually using this type of setup with pads and a module and everything um, is few and far between. And I think I figured some of the things out. Some of the things that have been different on the electronic side that drummers really can't get used to are some of the aesthetics things about a live drum set in itself. For studio, if you talk to any engineer, they love the word separation. Separation, separation, separation. Isolation. Being able to capture the specific sound for each specific instrument. Notice in the electronic kit, that's all you get. When I do this, you hear a bass drum. When you hear this, you're hearing a snare drum with a little ambience on it, but snare drum. In the real acoustic world, if I did this, you'd hear a little bit of the mm from a tom on top or a mm on bottom because the sonic vibration from the bass drum is making your drums ring sympathetically. Well, that's not the case with an electronic kit. When you're grooving along, everything that you're playing is a separate note by itself. So there's no unity as such between the drum kit. And I think that's one of the main reasons that live performance has been hindered or at least has not been utilized enough with electronic drum kits. There is so much separation here. Number two, is you, I don't know whether you can see this, my two pads on my right side, which are actually cymbal pads for me, are the hard rubber pads. Um, cymbals aren't hard rubber. I have a hi-hat right here, one of the lesser models that doesn't go up and down. So these particular nuances for a live kit, the metallic cymbals, the hi-hat that travels up and down instead of just the control part, are hard for drummers to get used to. And believe me, it took me a while as I was getting along. Also, I am using the V-Drum Professional Pads. I have uh, two PD-125s and two PD-85s, and I've actually got uh, a PX-6 or PX-8 on my floor top, which is another type of meshed head drum and I got to tell you the mesh heads on these particular drums they say that you can make them feel like drum heads mm, no nah, not really they are springy and they give you bounce but sometimes it gives you a little too much bounce and it feels like you're playing on a trampoline 
Uh, and I've tried loosening them and tightening them. They have to be a certain amount of tightness on there. Um, but because it's mesh and not either plastic or even skin, from if you've ever done it way back when, uh, because the plastic tends to not give as much as these mesh heads, they tend to feel a little bit different. I, I found this out just by trying to do threes. And believe it or not, I do it on a normal snare drum. And I guess I've gotten used to that bounce off of a normal snare drum head. I can actually do it a little bit faster than on here, simply because this is actually making my sticks bounce back way more than they would on the acoustics. So I think these little nuances are what's caving things in for the electronic drummer. But there is another thing, and this has to do with personality in the live environment. I was constantly sending my settings. I was modeling a bunch of kits uh, to get the sounds that I want. Um, sending them out to friends and saying, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? How do you like this snare? How do you like this symbol? Whatever. And the electronics give us multitudes of capabilities. The unfortunate part of that is we as human beings try to use the multitude of capabilities. Now, by that I mean when you're playing live and you're on an acoustic kit, Pretty much everything that you play is going to sound the same. I mean, you're going to use different nuances when you're playing, but the drums themselves are not changeable. Here, whatever sound that you want is attainable. The problem being in a live environment is you don't necessarily need all those sounds. And I'm not saying that you should limit yourself, but I will tell you this. And this was a sort of semi warning that I uh, got from one of my friends who is a sound engineer. I told him I was actually planning 19 different kits with different sounds on them, specifically changing tom setups, cymbal setups, and you know different snare drums. And I only had a few bass drums and things like that. But he said to me, "If you take and give 19 drum sets." to a sound engineer in a live gig, he's going to throw something at you simply because he's got to worry about balance not only for you, but balance with the entire band. And if your sound is constantly changing, you're going to make that person work himself to death, himself or herself to death because you're constantly changing all these sounds. And really it does go against everything that you see in the live environment today so why not and now i've i've cleared my head maybe it's because I've, i'm not as cold because i've got this cap on but i've cleared my head and what i've decided to do especially since i want to take these out live with me and this is my tip for you today is take one drum kit one good sounding drum kit and right now i think this is actually a pretty good uh Pretty good kit sound. I think that's a pretty well rounded kit. And what I'm going to do now is duplicate that kit maybe five or six times and in that duplication I'm going to maintain stability between my toms and my kick drum and my cymbals because those are the real staples for me and utilize different snare drum sounds something like a, a nice big rock sound uh, that I've already been using for uh, for a bunch of things but that doesn't necessarily mean
just to get that sound doesn't necessarily mean that I have to give up all of the other sounds. I got a good rock snare drum. I even got a good Led Zeppelin rock snare drum. Well, I can use all those effects that I'm using on the snare drum and put it on my kit the normal way from the normal kit that I'm going to use. The number one kit with the toms the way they are and the cymbals the way they are and just give me the nuance with the snare drum. And I think that's the way that you really have to approach doing electronics for the live gig. So it's a kind of limiting yourself but it's also a kind of balance for yourself. And I think that balance is really, really important, especially since you go into a hall or a club or whatever that sounds totally different anyway. Why have so many variables that you spend the whole night trying to gain control of your kit where in your acoustic setup, you never had to worry about that. You never retuned for a a club or anything like that. You set up your mics and pretty much go. So that's my tip for today in the cold here in my basement and for you in the real world.